Okay, let's please welcome in the coach, Jim Barker. Apparently, it's a family affair, Coach. Your whole family's watching. David, John, I love that you've brought them all into the RP show, man. That's great. Yeah, my bro my older brother lives in Virginia, David, and his wife, Shelly, they're in Gig Harbor celebrating John's wife's Karen's birthday, and they sent me something last night at dinner. But I knew that John and Karen, they're, they watch Rod Peterson every week. But uh, my older brother, I think this is a first for him. Well, welcome. Welcome to all the Barkers. We think a lot of Jim. That's why we have him here on the program. And this is going to be an unfair question, but life's not fair, Coach. What game has you the most fired up in Week 16 of the CFL? Oh, boy. Uh, you know, everyone, every single one is great. I'm going to say this Toronto-Hamilton because... It's a must win. If Hamilton loses this, I mean, they may be able to cross over, but this is like, this is their playoff game. It doesn't get any bigger for them. And for Toronto, if they can win, they actually will be uh, even in, in number of wins with Ottawa, who plays Montreal tomorrow, which now makes second place great. That to me, that game in the East is monstrous. Um, that obviously the Saskatchewan, oh my goodness gracious, you know, they haven't won a game past Labor Day since 2021. Do you talk about adding pressure to the pressure cooker that is Regina, that you know what Regina is like? It's like I said when Corey got the job. It's the greatest job in the world until you have to start playing games. And, you know, it's, it's, it's tough. <laughs> When you haven't won a game as an organization since 2021 after Labor Day, you talk about mounting the pressure, and now they go into McMahon Stadium, which, again, it, that's just a difficult place for Saskatchewan to play. I, I, it's, it's good. That's going to be a spectacular game. That, that's going to be a fantastic game. And then you have the first and second place team in the East on Saturday with Montreal play, going into Ottawa. And Ottawa trying to stave off the Argos, um, but also trying to catch, uh, you know, Montreal. So, uh, and then it ends with with Edmonton, the team that everybody thinks is the one nobody wants to play. Uh, Trey Ford coming back at quarterback against the Bombers, uh, who lost Adam Big Hill for the year, but um, they'll still be the Bombers. And... It's in Edmonton, which is a huge advantage for Edmonton. I think the crowd will be great again. You have four games. How do you pick a great, a best game? There's not one bad one. I would not leave the TV for 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 any of them. It, it, it's going to be that great of a CFL weekend. I can't remember. I like agree. This. No, I don't. And it was it was an unfair question. But by the way, we're inclusive here. Answer it however you want. I don't think there's a wrong. Answer to that. And then the team that's not playing, I'm dying to ask you this, is BC. How serious is their quarterback controversy? Let's be honest. Like, who should they be starting in their next game, Nathan Rourke or VA? Nathan Rourke is their future. I mean, they signed him to a three-year deal. Uh, you know, this is one that everybody says how great it is to have two great quarterbacks. And that could be true as long as you're winning. But as soon as you start losing, now that can become a real problem in your locker room because, you know, you'll have players who are very, very for VA. You'll have players for Rourke. You'll, you'll have, that, that happens as soon as you don't win. So when they lost that game to Toronto, it made that quarterback situation, to me, go from very enviable to, man, I'm not sure I'd want to be Rick Campbell in this one. Yeah, so, and that's, you know, I don't know. Listen, that whole adage about if you don't, if you have two quarterbacks, you don't have one. No, I'd rather have two really good quarterbacks. And that's what they have. But you're right. Um, it's not something <clears> you would want to go on for very long. We had it with Burris and Nelon Green in the early 2000s in Saskatchewan, and it split the locker room right down the middle. And what's terrible is they're both great guys. And I'm sure VA and Nathan Rourke are too, right? Like, I just hope Nathan gets back to being Nathan because he's not right now. 
Yeah, well, you have two guys that are both viable MOP. They're viable guys who could be MOP in the league. And it's not like having, um, even when you had Henry and, and Nelon, I'm not sure either at that point in Henry's career, because we signed him in 2005 in Calgary. Um, I, I had just gotten the GM job there, and we signed Henry in Calgary. Um, but And I remember that, that whole thing with Nelon. They were both really good quarterbacks, but neither one was at that MOP stick. You got two MOP quarterbacks, two guys that this year, if Nathan would have come in and played at the level he was at, after um, after VA's first half of the season, you could legitimately say we got two guys who could could be MOP. Now that's a completely different situation than Henry Burris, Neilon Green. That's two really great quarterbacks, really quarterbacks that are really soft. But that's not two MOP quarterbacks, and that that's a whole different kettle of fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jody writes in and says, Argos. This is where the Argo fans come to talk. Right here, the RP Show. Jeff the Stamps fan writes in and he says, Death, taxes, and the Riders losing at McMahon. Yeah, except for playoff time, Jeff. Do we want to go there? I didn't think so. Uh, on those Argos, they got stuff to prove, too. They got stuff to, I mean, big win in BC last week, no doubt. But there's always going to be the naysayers on Chad Kelly. And I think he's probably using yeah. this. As fuel, you know that should you know that's gonna, just going to be a hell of a game tonight. Chad Kelly versus Bo Levi. This, this we got great quarterback matchups here too, right? And that's throughout the league. I think you've got quarterbacks playing really well all the way across. I mean, when you look at at every game, Bo Levi's playing as well as he's played since 2018, and that bodes well for. The, the, for the Tiger Cats, who bring Chris Jones back, and they change the whole dynamic. They are now a team that you just, when they're on the field, they are flying around, having fun, and expecting to get turnovers. It wasn't a case. I, you know, and I like Mark Washington a lot, but sometimes you've been at a place too long, and whatever happens, Chris Jones has come in there and lit a fire in that place, and that allows the quarterback to even play at a different level. Chad Kelly, Chad Kelly's as good as there is in the league. He he really is. He's a, a fan. What he did last year was, I think, glossed over. Um, like him, don't like him uh, by, you know, the other things. That That's a person's choice. But we're blessed to have a great, a great player like that in our league. Um, it's going to be just a, in a must-win game. That's why I say, to me, it's a must-win game. At BMO Field, you got two teams that need the game badly, but it's a must win for Hamilton and Bo Levi. And I just, I, I can't wait to watch that. But you got great quarterbacking everywhere. I mean, Trevor Harris, Trevor Harris is going to go down as one of the all time leading passers in the history of this league, you know, and uh, Jake Mayer is, is finding his way. You know, he's having a bit of a down year, um, but they let go of Bo Levi Mitchell for Jake Mayer. And you can't forget that. John Huffnagel and Dave Dickinson, no quarterbacks as well as anybody in this league. And they chose Jake Mayer over Bo Levi Mitchell. And then, you know, you have Trey Ford and what's he doing with against Zach Caleros the end, last year, two-time, uh, you know, going for his third MOP in a row, I believe. Um, those two quarterbacks going at it on uh, a Saturday. A quarterback who just threw for 500 yards, he can't get in the lineup because of Trey Ford. So... I mean, how can you not love this? Cody yeah, Fajardo, your I boy. Can... Cody Fajardo and Drew Brown. Again, same Co thing. Cody going to go in there. They're going to have they're going to have their way with the Red Blacks. Continue. Sorry. <laughs> I kind of I kind of agree with you on that one. I think the Red Blacks are injured. Um, I, I was going to ask you, what did you think of the Riders going out and sign Raquel Armstead? Who had all and the starting him tonight? In Ottawa and starting him. And starting tonight. him. I don't like it. I don't like it. Uh, they started a right tackle that they stole from the Stamps practice roster the week the Riders were at Toronto. Started him four days later in uh, in that game. You were there. It's Trevante. It's not. Yeah, yeah. And I just. Yeah. It's. I. 
you're putting me on the spot because the roster's being exposed. It's a depth issue um, to me. And I guess while we're talking about that team, and by the way, I just want to say Adrian's checked in from the Rainy Day podcast in West Palm Beach, Florida. He says, great shirt, Rod. Thanks, Adrian. I wanted to say thank you for, for pointing that out. It's from the Is that a um, soccer shirt, life. though? That looks like no. a soccer shirt. It's, I would never wear a soccer shirt. It's from a clothing brand called Whole Life here in Florida. They've given me a whole line of, of clothes, mostly NFL colors. This is supposed to be Florida Panthers colors. But let's be honest. How about Corey Mays having to stop practice twice? You come back from a bye, and you got to stop practice twice to yell at your guys, take them inside when you're facing a must-win game? None of it looks good. Cut signing this bad actor that Ottawa got rid of, you sign him and play him Friday? Like, Jim, it doesn't look good, okay? But when I say that, people don't like me pointing out the truth. When you haven't won a game past Labor Day in two years, it, it's almost desperate. Like I said, it's desperation time. These games tonight, how? what better could you do on a Friday night than watch these two games? I mean, these games are going to be spectacular. They both have such great storylines. Hmm. I'm guessing you don't know if they'll be on CBS Sports Network in the States tonight or not, or do you know? I don't know. I don't know. My, okay. my brother John yeah, you know, would know. Tell yeah. John to – he knows everything about when CFL footballs are. Okay, so John, can will, you please let us know? John, to... yeah. <laughs> Jim's brother John is watching in Washington – and because here, listen, I'm serious about it because I got to go to DeBuck's game, Cardinal Gibbons Chiefs High School tonight, and I want to go to Wings and Things after the game and watch it on CBS Sportsnet with DeBuck in the wing place we go yeah. to in Fort Lauderdale. I want to know if it, I want to know if it's going to be on the TV or not. Uh, I do have an NFL question for you. I don't know if you've seen. I'm sure you have. The passing yards in the NFL through two weeks are at an all-time low. And now everybody's mm -hmm. going off about, oh, they don't pass anymore. Do you think it's just a fad? Or is it a trend, do you think, of more of a ground game? No, I think it's everything is cyclical in sports, and especially in football. And I think you're seeing a lot more two and three tight ends, a lot of um, people are going to run the ball. There, You have a lot of head coaches now are defensive coaches and defensive coaches they want no turnovers um, run them they don't want the field spread and I also think the whole quarterback injury thing has something to do with that and um, when you when you run these spread offenses you expose the quarterback and it's one of the things in our league that's just a fact of the way our league play our league doesn't use many tight ends anymore there's a few teams that will occasionally line up a fullback and a tight end, but but not very often, not like the old days. And again, that will become cyclical too. But I think a lot of it has to do with that. Plus the quarterbacks they're getting from the NFL are more on the athletic side than they've been before. And I think it's more conducive to them to run more of the play action types of things and that type of thing, which means you have to run the ball to set up the play action because those are called progression reads where a quarterback will go one, two, play action, and I'm going to go deep, middle. And they're a lot different than in the passing game. You have certain defenders based on coverage you have to read. Um, you know, So it's a different mentality in terms of how you read in a drop back as opposed to play action. And I think a lot of it is you've got how many young quarterbacks? I mean, um, Bryce Young's getting benched this week. Uh, Cameron Williams is struggling. Uh, you know, it's just there. you got Justin Fields now playing in Pittsburgh and playing okay. You, you know, you've got a lot of guys that are those type of quarterbacks that will, the simpler it is, the better it's going to be because then they can use their athleticism. Sure. Well, I just have said this to you before. People, not just us, get way too ingrained in what goes on early. Saskatchewan Rough Riders started 5-1. and one. They could be eliminated from the race tonight. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers started 0-4. Right? And all of a sudden, they've won five in a row. And, like, it's these early things. Well, you're Edmonton stat. You're Edmonton stat. I'm stealing it Isn't tonight. that something? 
the first okay, team you can in have history. I love when it's going to be the first team in history. So I'm stealing me that too. one tonight. You as need long to. as you give me credit. Okay, Coach, we will be uh, <laughs> we'll be watching. Thank you so much. Thanks for bringing your family in. All right, hey, and uh, and tell DeBuck good luck tonight. Is he a big game for him? Every game's big, but yeah, yeah, yeah. They're one and two. They could use this one tonight. Yeah, it's going to be Bud Tight Stadium's going to be rocking tonight here in Fort Lauderdale. All right, there thanks. We go. Go. I'll pass it along. Thanks. All right. Coach Jim Barker joining us from the CFL on TSN. And thank you to John Barker or David, one of the two Barker brothers that are watching, saying that all games are on CFL plus this weekend in the USA because college football has taken over CBS Sports Network.